Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bondle Build Construction here. I'm gonna put together another video for you of a radiant heat system with a wood boiler. This one's a homemade wood boiler that me and my buddy Matt made for his shop here in the background. This shop here is a, it's a big one. It's a 48 by 48 shop, guys, and uh, we built it on a monolithic slab. It's got radiant in-floor heat in it. Um, everything's insulated. I'll show you how we did it, and I'll show you the wood boiler, and then if you guys got any questions, you know hit me up on how he did this but it's pretty sweet it works real good like i said she's 48 by 48 it's got a lean to on the side here that's unheated but it's a pretty big shop so the floor is insulated underneath the concrete obviously it's got block a block stem wall coming up off the floor right here we laid right on the floor but behind this if you hear that, it's kind of a hollow sound. We got um, this board foam right here. We got behind that on the concrete block. And then we put dura rock over it and we parged the dura rock. So that's there's insulation on that block. So that's insulated. So he's got insulated doors. This whole building's blown cellulose. So Sick inside here. So we just put that lift in too this year. But this is really warm in here in this building. And like I said, it's it's big, it's 48 by 48. He basically heats this thing for free. He gets like, just, he gets some wood, you know, cuts a few trees a year. He burns about five to eight cords of wood, face cords of wood to heat this. And here's the wood boiler. He gets some pallets at where he works, free pallets, but here's the boiler system, guys. It's just an uninsulated tank in a tank design. Not sure if he's even got it. I'm sure he's got it going, but I don't know, it's out. It's not even going, it's real warm in here. Got a little baffle up in here, guys. So the smoke has to go up and over the baffle. And then his chimney pipe comes right out of the middle there. Just goes up he just replaced the chimney pipe taped everything up so there i don't know if you can see this line right here should be able to but that's the inner tank just a flat plate welded between the two tanks and it's got fire brick in it we put some uh good size fire brick in it. it goes all the way down the bottom there's no ash clean out you just shovel out the ashes in here and sitting on a pedestal here not exactly how many know how many gallons of water it holds, but it probably only holds about I don't know probably a hundred gallons of water tops. So the door's got this fan on it here, which is controlled by this little uh, Ranko. Let's see what it says right there. If you can see that, that's the brand of it. It's a temperature control, electronic temperature control, Ranko. So that, you could set this thing right here. You hit the set and it lights up and you can adjust it with these arrows. You get, it's got a, a limit on it, a high and low limit you can set, which will actually turn the fan on. It lifts this magnet up, which pulls this flapper up and blows air into the firebox. So pretty simple design. We bought all this stuff online, so there's a kit you can get where you can get this. This is run off an aquastat or a, there's a probe that goes in here and that probe goes inside the water jacket and that's what gives you the, that's what controls the tempter. It's only at 70 degrees right now. See if I can get around the back of it. So this is the back of it guys. It's made out of a propane tank. Like a, it had a, it was a thousand gallon propane tank. He cut it apart and that's how he made this one. This is a simple design wood boiler. Anybody could build this if you got any kind of welding skills. It's real simple. The inner tank's just got a flat plate on the back, guys. Just weld it on the back about in here. I'll see if I can round up some pictures of it as we build it. This thing here is nothing more than an empty propane tank. And it's got it's plumbed into there so if the water has to have a place to expand this is a non-pressurized boiler so there's a hole drilled in the top of this tank too 
but that just allows something for the water if it expands to go up inside that tank just a place for the water to go and then he's got his uh return line here comes down in and his feed comes out of here he just we just put the pump right off the boiler real simple just a welded bung in there that's a 009 Taco 009 pump runs over to a mixing valve here that's a mixing valve which will lower the temperature which really doesn't run this boiler very hot so it doesn't really even need that but that's set up and then it runs this PEX lines over here I'm not sure I can even see where it goes into the floor because he's got a bunch of stuff in here actually here it is guys there's where it all runs in goes into the floor here that's where we brought our pecs out you got your little just just copper headers when we did this design we ran the tubing all at the same length in this floor um i'll see if i can remember how many foot of tubing we ran it should be about a foot of tubing per square foot of uh, building space so this is 48 by 48 so but simple headers guys we just made them up and it goes into the, they go into the floor underneath you can't really see but under here it's under the floor there so no balancing valves no temperature controls or nothing it just runs off that 009 pump and pumps into the floor and returns out the other ones pretty simple setup that's how we did that so this floor guys is about um six to seven inches thick most places it's got a pitch in it to this center drain which we do a lot which runs to daylight so he's got a drain going through the whole thing right down the middle of the shop the reason this shop performed so well is the way we built the foundation first of all and the way it was insulated you can see up there because he hadn't put the osb on yet but that's dense pack cellulose guys so that uh this is a two by six construction so um, it's got two by six and then it's got purlins running on the outside to hold the metal but these walls are all dense pack cellulose there's no spray foam or nothing in this building which uh you know spray foam works good in certain applications but i kind of like this uh this dense pack cellulose deal for a shop like this and then upstairs he put this osb on the ceiling and there's a lot of cellulose blown into the attic so this whole attic's got about you know probably i think we started out about 16 inches thick it's settled now so it's only really about a foot thick right now up there but it uh, still performs real well and then he's got you know there's a a partial attic in half of this so he's got a little uh stairway to get up there and built this door that has actually got insulation board in it you can see it's got a piece of insulation board so that when he closes that door he's got it open right now because he's letting heat go up in there but in the dead of winter he'll close that door and that'll keep this shop this shop i mean usually when you're in here you're in a t-shirt i mean i'm seldom in here with anything more than a t-shirt i'm actually sweating right now but it's not that cold out today but um, this shop will stay warm once the slab's warm i'll i'll draw you a picture of how we did the slab because under this slab has got a bunch of sand and then it's got a bunch of uh obviously the pex tubing's in there but the insulation is under the sand and under the concrete so it's got a hell of a thermal mass to it so and with that boiler you get a ripping and once this floor is up to temperature man it holds the temperature for a long time just because of the thermal mass in the floor and like i said i'll try to draw you a little sketch of how we did this 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 and you know if you guys want to build a shop like this uh, and you're going to do a, a heated shop and you want to do it on a slab like a you know we call it a monolithic slab which is a thickened edge slab and i'll show you how we did this there's a couple different ways you can do it but the way we did this i think works pretty good and here's a view of the, you know, just regular concrete blocks, guys, here. Right there. Like I said, on the outside of those concrete blocks, there's two inches of foam. So we actually laid these blocks in, you know, a little bit smaller, you know, than our final um, dimension that we wanted. I think we must have went uh, two, four, about five inches smaller when we built the block wall. That allowed for two inches of foam 
and a half inch of dur rock, which we screwed into through the foam into the like tap conda into the blocks. So, you know, when you look in here, it just looks like a concrete block. But if I was to do this again, I would use ICF myself. I would put like, you know, right there where them blocks are, that'd be one course of ICF. That way I'd fill that ICF solid and uh, rebar it down into the slab. Just because, you know, when we did this one, we weren't doing ICF, we were doing mostly block stuff, but we don't, we don't do a lot of block work now. So that's the shop guys. I just wanted to show you, I'm going to continue. You know, let me know if you like these, um, these radiant heat videos, I'm going to keep doing them. Like I said, if you got any questions on this boiler, um, you know, I can kind of explain a little better how we built it. It's real simple. It's, um, it's definitely not the most efficient way to build a boiler. You know, it, it smokes a little bit, but it, uh, we just burn, you know, just scraps wood. This is just some, uh, actually some of this is actually pine. This is pine right here. So he's just burning junk right now, but you know, he'll burn pallet wood and you know, anything in this boiler will burn anything. You know, like I said, it's not, it's not no gasification unit or nothing. Uh, they're a lot more complex, but just kind of a barrel in a barrel design, real simple, but it works great for this shop. You know, it heats this shop great, tremendous. Doesn't burn hardly any wood. Like I said, between five and eight cords to heat this 48 by 48 shop, guys. Thanks for watching my videos. Like I said, if you like this kind of stuff, I'm gonna do more videos for you if you want me to on radiant heat systems that I've put together. This is just one of many. We got ones we did with oil um, water heaters. We got some propane water heaters out there that we put together, um, ones like that. We got them running off um, anything that heats water, guys, you can run it, you know. There you go, thanks for watching. Hey guys, so uh, Bondo here. Matt was able to send me a bunch of pictures of his shop and uh, as we built it and the foundation system and stuff. Cause when we put this shop together, I wasn't doing any YouTube. So uh, I'm gonna try to narrate you through some of the pictures here. This is just a picture of the shop, pretty much complete without the lean-to on the side. And uh, as we go here, this is the beginning. We had to get a big roller in there and level out the site and, and put a bunch of gravel in. It was on a hill there, have it rolled in lifts. Here's another picture of it being built up with the gravel and lifts. Here's what, how we did the foam, guys. We put the foam down and then sand on top of it and actually created like a reverse monolithic slab. Here's us putting the 2 by around the edges on the foam that's me Matt and his dad Chip there's Ryan our buddy we lost him in a snowmobile accident last year um, here we are guys putting the tubing down you can see the sand we had wire mesh laid on top of the sand here we are pouring the concrete filling everything in there's me power trowel the top of it um, here's how we did the dirt rock around and the foam board around the block basement we parged it here as you can see and there's the finished foundation right there guys and this is just us me scraping up some dirt on the bulldozer pushing up around kind of banking the site there i am on the bulldozer that's pretty much how i did the foundation all right guys so there's the foundation here we are building the walls on the deck and here we are standing up the walls with a pick pole on the Kubota tractor. There's some more pictures of the walls going up. There's another picture, walls with the header on the end, setting it with the tractor. Here we are setting the trusses, guys. We had a big um, machine come in to set the trusses for us. Here they are, trusses, gable ends, boxing the gable ends in. You can see the Tyvek paper so the cellulose can blow in there. There's another picture. There's a picture of the roof after the roof was on, guys. There's the inside of the building. Here's the OSB on the ceiling, guys, with the lights on the shop. Here's the propane tank we started with, guys. We cut it apart. We cut it in half here. And then we're going to make the fire chamber. The inside, this is the piece we used. And we cut a chunk out of it here kind of squeezed it together and made it smaller so it'll fit in the other tank. Here we are welding it together across the seam. We set the inside one, the smaller one that we made in the bigger one. Here's the chimney pipe being cut to length. 
and here's putting some legs on the boiler and here's the end cap we cut out of a piece of flat plate cutting the chimney hole in it here here's uh, the flat plate we're cutting with the plasma cutter cutting right here's a little compass um, Daryl made a circle out of it and here's the inside of the fire chamber we're welding the flat plate to that and that whole thing gets set in the outer barrel right here and gets welded on and here's the finished boiler pretty much guys there's a door picture of the hinges and that's how we built this boiler here's a picture of it finished without the fire brick in it so guys that's pretty much it for the video I just wanted to show you how we built Matt's shop um, and his wood boiler this is a super efficient building uh, so I wanted to show you how we insulated it and everything um, thanks for watching my videos guys do me a favor throw me a comment if you got any questions or anything ask them on here um, give me a like you know if you like this video and uh, check out my channel guys if you're not a subscriber we do a lot of cool stuff here with radiant heat and foundation work and stuff like that so check that out and uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when we're uploading more videos and thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks.